As I mentioned in the last video, our next step is going to be sequencing. So we've laid out our house, or at least what we want to see for now. You can always add or remove things later. We're now going to go over here to the sequencer, which is where a lot of people spend the bulk of their time here in X Lights. So what I'm going to do here is just press this new sequence button. And then I get some options. So this is a little wizard here to get you started. It's really helpful. You can bring in music or do an animation just for the sake of this video and the music licensing, I'm just going to do a basic animation. Then I'm going to go ahead and set it to 20 frames per second, 40 or custom. Now 20 is good enough for most people, but if you're doing especially fast music and you need to do some really quick changes, sometimes 20 frames per second isn't enough, but it's a lot more information that's going out to your controllers. So I would recommend unless you run into a problem with 20 frames um stick with it don't there's no need to go to 40 unless you really need that level of um of frame rate if you need it to move that fast so again we can select a view all models or none or whatever other views you've set up and then we can go to quick start i'm just gonna do that because it's not that complicated so we bring in all of our different models here so this is the vertical and this is just a basic timeline. So horizontally, we've got time. Vertically, we've got all our models and, and our groups. So one of the things we can see here, for example, is all these different models we've brought in. And these were brought in based in the order that we had ordered them in here in the sequencer, which happens to be alpha, or in the layout rather, which happens to be alphabetical. So we can see here then, um, that this is the order they get brought in and that we made them in actually. And what's really important here is that the priority is vertical. So the top most item, if it's being sequenced, say like it's a group here, this is my full porch outline group, then if it's being sequenced here at the top, then this sequence is going to be shown even if there's something going on down here that uses that same, those same lights, okay? So simply put, we've got, like we said, our timeline here with all of our different models. And then here at the top, we've got effects. We can turn lights off, on, and do a variety of different effects on them. And we can do some other settings here. So let's just start with the very basics. I want to just get you started here because what I did when I first started learning these programs and doing Christmas lighting for my own house is I started with the basics. And... Was it the perfect sequence ever? No, but here's the great part is that I was able to knock out a few songs, um, get my first year sequence, get my first couple songs, you know, get the display started. And then once I watched it a few times, I began to say, oh, what if I wanted to do this? What if I wanted to do that? And, I'm, and you could just open your sequences again, make them better, and then come right back and, um, you know, add them to your show. So this is totally an iterative process in the sense that you can start, you can do some basics and you can come back later and update it. So say for example, I go to my all group here and I just decide I'm going to do the butterfly for this sequence. And so I dragged it on. Now notice I get a preview when I, when I have it selected and I'm just going to drag it out for the whole 30 seconds here. Actually, let's just do 10 seconds. And then when I click on it, I do see a preview. So this one right here is the house preview, which has the picture of the house on it, of course. And this one has the model. Now, there's a variety of settings right here. We'll look at those here. So we can literally toggle through these different settings and see some different things. With a lot of these settings, you can find tutorials on YouTube from people. Um, or you can, you know, just go ahead and play with it and you can really see as you dial different things in how it works with the effect it's pretty simple so i've just dialed in you know i'm just gonna do the old rainbow makes it easy cool so now i've got this effect running now let's drag something else in maybe i drag in a morph here just on the roof line after this one stops for another 10 seconds. So we can see there that one's just happening on the roof. And maybe I bring in some fire on my matrixes. 
An important thing here too is say I draw this in. Now we can really see the difference between the model preview and the whole house preview. So say I've got this clicked. Now I, I can copy and paste really easily. So just control C here on Windows. I imagine it's command C on Mac and paste. And I can just line those guys back up. Really simple. And then I can see, okay, there it is on my models. Perfect. That's what's happening on my whole house at the time. So this is just the individual model that's selected, which is matrix two. And this is the whole house. And you can drag all your things together. Let's hit play. And we watch here. Okay, here's what's happening. You know, there's the model. There's the house doing the rainbow thing. And then once we get 10 seconds in, boom, we switch to this other one. And so you can do really whatever you want here. We say after that, I go on this, what is this? One horizontal on my porch. I bring in this effect, which is not all that exciting. Um, but you're able to do that live and on the fly here, just drag stuff in, see how it looks and work with it. So that's really the basics of sequencing. You know, once you're done, save, of course. Um, that's really important to save. And then you can give it a name. So I'll just call it test one. Boom. And, and now you're good to go. You've got your sequence done. It's ready to go. And um, you're able to use it. And one last thing that I want to show you in regards to sequencing and, and really getting the sequencing all set up here is... When you're working with music, this is really powerful too. You can just uh, go ahead and set the uh, metronome and the uh, use those VAMP plugins we downloaded to set timings. So what we're going to do is press New Sequence Musical. Go to my Christmas light songs here. I'm going to use God Rest Ye Gentlemen slash Joy to the World by House of Heroes. 20 frames per second. All models quick start. Now here where it says new timing, we're gonna right click, add timing track. And then here we've got a couple options. Now 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, metronome and empty. You can use those even with a non-musical sequence. But then these guys down here all came from those plugins that we installed, those VAMP plugins. And I usually go with the basic ones. I'm not that musical, like I get beat, but <laughs> that's about it for me. And so, what I like to do is just go in here and I like to do bars is measures. You know, a typical piece of music is four, four, um, which means four beats per measure and every measure it would put a, a thing or we can do beat count. Just going to do this here or individual beats. So depending on what you're doing, you might want different ones and you can just add this in here, press OK. Then you say, okay, how many beats per bar? Four, which is pretty typical in most kind of rock music or anything similar. Press OK. It's going to go through it, and it's going to add those timing markers in. Now, these timing markers do a few amazing things for you. And the first thing it does is when you're working with effects, it can build the effects off that timing, which is huge. The second thing is just especially if you zoom in, I just use my scroll wheel and uh, control. You can now see here. If you're starting and stopping effects, you can make it happen on a beat exactly. And I'll just press play here real quick. You're not going to hear this music, but uh, I can. And I'm just going to check. I can obviously see the drum, the snare drum hits here, but I'm just going to check that the beats line up correctly. And they do. Um, the plugin typically does a really good job. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about the setup tab here in X Lights and uh, getting things set up because up to this point, we've been doing some cool things. You know, we've got some great animations running on our house, but at the end of the day, none of this is going to do anything until we go to the setup tab and set up our physical controllers so that we can control some lights.